Hi, it's time for some bedtime stories from Wood Library. I'm Mrs. Ferris and this is my friend Bernard and we've picked out some really good ones for you tonight. So let's get started. Our first book is called William Wakes Up and it's written by Linda Ashman and illustrated by Chuck Gronick. And this book is published by Disney Hyperion. On a quiet morning, sleepy and still, William looks out on a moss-covered hill. He hears a faint and distant tune and says, my friend will be here soon. It's been a long and wintry wait. We need a cake to celebrate. Wake up, it's spring, today's the day. A special guest is on the way. Rise and shine, no time to lose. One rolls out four others snooze. I'm up, I'm out, I'm wide awake. I'll help you bake a welcome cake. So they stir and whir and mix and pour. Then Chipmunk conks out on the floor. There's way too much for us to do. We better wake the others too. Wake up, it's spring. Today's the day. A special guest is on the way. Rise and shine. No time to lose. One rolls out. Three others snooze. I cannot sleep a minute more. I'll gladly clean the kitchen floor. So they bake, they scrub, they wipe and scrape. Says Porcupine, whoa, I'm out of shape. There's way too much for us to do. We better wake the others too. Wake up, it's spring. Today's the day. A special friend is on the way. Rise and shine, no time to lose. One rolls out, two others snooze. A special guest arriving soon. I'll tidy up the living room. They dust. They shine, they fluff and buff, till Groundhog groans, oh, I've had enough. There's way too much for us to do. We better wake the others too. Wake up, it's spring, today's the day. A special guest is on the way. Does one roll out? Oh yes, you bet. And the other? Nope, not yet. Oh dear, says Bear, it seems I'm late. May I help you decorate? They frost, they squeeze, they paste and paint. Then Bear sits down, oh, I'm feeling faint. There's way too much for us to do. Perhaps Raccoon can help us too. They gather round the rumply bed, then Pat Raccoon still dozing head. Hey, raccoon, pitch in, help out. They tug his tail, they nudge his snout. Raccoon just snores and burrows deep. But is he really sound asleep? Just outside, they hear some flapping, chirping, tweeting, tap, tap, tapping. Then a whistle loud and clear. William says, my friend is here. They throw the front door open wide. Welcome, Bluebird, come inside. We baked a cake just for you, but we might like a sliver too. Raccoon bolts up. Did I hear cake? Don't start without me, I I'm awake. Hmm, says Chipmunk, that's not fair. He hasn't helped at all, says Bear. It isn't right, it isn't nice. He shouldn't get a single slice. Raccoon looks sad, he hangs his head. I'm sorry that I stayed in bed. I'd like to help now if I could and have some cake, oh, it looks so good. Says William, there's more work to do. Bluebird needs a building crew. Oh, yes, he's right. I do, raccoon. My friends will be here very soon. 
We'll need new nests, no time to lose. Then I will help, I will not snooze. But first, says William, grab a plate. Right now, it's time to celebrate. Welcome, friends. Welcome, son. Welcome springtime, everyone. So there they are having a little bit of a picnic with that cake. And Raccoon, well, he's helping build some nests. Well, shall we do a finger play about a bed? Since nobody wanted to get out of that bed, can you put up your five fingers? We'll have them be monkeys and our other hand will be our bed. I've got five little monkeys who are jumping on the bed. When one fell off, oh, he bumped his head. So his mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So four little monkeys are jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. That means three little monkeys are jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. Two little monkeys are jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. And that leaves one little monkey who is jumping on the bed. Why, she fell off and she bumped her head. So Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So no more. But we're going to go from jumping on the bed or snoozing in the bed to being a couch potato. That's the title of this book by Jory John. It's illustrated by Pete Oswald and is published by Harper. I hope I'm not reading it to any couch potatoes. I am a potato. Not a small potato like my brother. Not a sweet potato like my mother. Not a mashed potato like Uncle Stu. I am a couch potato. Oh yes, it's true. My favorite place to slouch is on the couch. I spend all my free time sitting in this exact spot. <sighs> Why would I ever leave this comfy, cozy couch? Why, it's got everything a potato could need. I have this, and this, and this, and one of these, and those, and this, and that, and these. Oh, and this, check it out. This button right here activates a gadget that fetches me snacks whenever I want. Bam, impressed. Well, and I don't even have to move an inch. Much easier than going into the kitchen. And the most important thing in life is to be comfortable at all times. Then I think I've got it all figured out. getting a massage and getting his hair combed. But wait, there's more. I haven't revealed the absolute best part of my whole setup. Are you ready? It's everything you see in front of me. Have a look around, take it all in. Pretty spectacular, right? Yes, it's a sea of shimmering screens from wall to shining wall. Oh, what joy, what bliss. These screens feature my favorite shows. This screen has all my unanswered messages. These screens are where I play video games. And this screen is a live stream of my friend, my best spud for life. And this is how my pals and I spend quality time together. It's much easier than trying to meet up somewhere like folks did in the 
old days, that's for sure. Hi, Spuddy. Hey, Paltato. Yes, from this very couch, I can control everything in my life all the time with just a few taps and a couple of clicks. Not bad, eh? Yes, siree. This is the life. At least that's what I thought until the other day. Something strange happened. There was a knock at the door and a delivery. Whoosh. Oh, it was my newest device, a video camera that would allow me to watch myself react while I was watching all my favorite shows. Woohoo! And all I had to do was plug it in in my room, nay, in my kingdom. Why, it would be complete. But suddenly, pew! I cried, coming through. Whoops, oof, ouch, whoomp. Well, I made it to the window and I pulled back the curtains. Oh, the sun seemed brighter than I remembered. There was nothing better to do, so I decided to take my dog Tater for a walk outside. It had been a while. Everything was so vivid, like, like a high-resolution, 156-inch curved screen, but even more realistic. Something smelled fresh. After a few moments, I realized that it was the air. I heard a noise, some chirps, a, a ringtone, perhaps? But no, I looked up to see some birds. Well, I wandered down the street from block to block and across the neighborhood, and eventually I found a park with a hill. And there was a massive tree on top. Why, it looked like a desktop background, only it was real. Neat. I leaned against the tree. <sighs> now, it wasn't as comfortable as my couch, why, not even close. But after a while, it wasn't so bad. Any worries about the power outage and what I might be missing drifted away. I wasn't thinking about my favorite shows or my unanswered messages or anything else, really. I noticed the stillness, the view, the sky, the clouds, oh, the sunset, and oh, those colors, my goodness. It took a while because there was no fast forward option but eventually the sun sank below the horizon. And by the time I got home, why, the power was back on. I sat on the couch. Whew. I hit the button to brush my teeth. I pulled the lever to change into my pajamas. I turned the knob to watch a bedtime story. And then I noticed my reflection on one of the screens. I wondered how much of my life had been spent in that very spot. It was then and there I made the decision to peel myself off the couch a bit more often. Maybe every day even. So that's what I've done. I started hanging out with my friends, my best buddies, outside. We started biking and hiking and swimming hiding and seeking. And sometimes we have snacks and play board games and sometimes we talk all day. We might watch the clouds. <laughs> There's no big plan. We just see what happens. And it makes me wonder, what if I don't always need to be totally comfortable? What if I'm happier when I have a better balance between my gadgets and the world outside? Because it turns out I am more than just a couch potato. I'm an amusing potato, a smart potato, a kind potato. I am an entertaining potato and I must sit on a hill and watch the sunset potato. Yes, 
There's a great big world out there and I want to be a part of it in person. But don't get me wrong. At the end of a long day, after I've run and played and talked and laughed with my friends, I still think it's awfully nice to slouch on the couch. <sighs> I like it that he's slouching on the couch with a good book, The Catcher in the Fry. That's The Couch Potato by Jory John. Well, let's do a finger play about, not potatoes, but something else you might eat. Can you get your five hot dogs ready? I've got my five little hot dogs that are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. So four little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Three little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Two little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. One little hot dog is cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and the one went bam. So now no little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and the pan went bam. Well, in our next story, Bill Grogan's goat. This goat eats the strangest things. This is adapted by Mary Ann Hoberman and illustrated by Nadine Bernard Westcott. And some of you might know it as a song. I'm not going to sing it, but I will read it to you. It's published by Megan Tingley Books, a division of Little Brown and Company. Bill Grogan's goat was feeling fine. He ate three red shirts right off the line. Bill grabbed the goat by the wool of his back and tied him to the railroad track. That goat he bucked with might and main as round the curve came a passenger train. That goat he bucked with might and main coughed up those shirts and flagged the train. The engineer stopped when he saw red. Why, it's a goat, he loudly said. He took his knife and cut the cord and asked that goat to come on board. Bill Grogan's goat took a great jump and landed on a fluffy lump. A sheep sprang up and shouted, ouch, I guess you thought I was a couch. The goat cried, sheep, have you been hurt? Forgive me, please, and take the shirt. The sheep went, bah, that's very kind. I'll put it on if you don't mind. The goat sat down upon a chair. Oh, that chair stood up. Oh, what a scare. That chair turned out to be a pig. It was quite fat and also big. Bill Grogan's goat felt very sad, gave pig a shirt and said, don't be mad. The pig went, oink, that's really neat. A new red shirt is quite a treat. Bill Grogan's goat felt rather sore. He saw a rug upon the floor. Oh, that rug jumped up. That rug yelled, ow! It was no rug, it was a cow. Bill Grogan's goat got on his knees. Cow, take this shirt, forgive me, please. Please take this shirt, the last I've got. The cow said, moo, and thanks a lot. The engineer said, it's time to eat. I'd like you all to take a seat. The others were so impolite, Bill Grogan's goat got not one bite. The dinners landed on their shirts from macaroni to desserts. The engineer said, I've never seen such dirty shirts. Go wash them clean. The hungry goat 
who was sitting by. He saw those shirts hung up to dry. They looked so fresh. They looked so fine. He ate all three right off the line. <laughs> Silly. Well, can you shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out and wiggle your waggles away. And can you clap, clap, clap your crazies out, clap, clap, clap your crazies out, clap, clap, clap your crazies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out, stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out, stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you, you better stand up. Jump, jump, jump your jiggles out, jump, jump, jump your jiggles out, jump, jump, Jump your jiggles out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you yawn? Yawn your sleepies out, yawn. Yawn your sleepies out, yawn. Yawn your sleepies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake. Shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out and wiggle your waggles away. This next book is called Rabbit, Rabbit, Rabbit. And it's about this rabbit right here. It's written and illustrated by Lorna Scobie and it's published by Henry Holding Company. Look at those eyes. Can you make your eyes big like that? I am the only child in my family, and that is the way I like it. The fox next door says he likes having rabbits around. The more the merrier, she says, but I can't see why. I like having everything to myself. My flowers, my carrots, my stretching area, my bedroom. But my parents have some news. Suddenly, I am no longer an only child. I no longer have everything to myself. He's destroying my flower, eating my carrots, napping in my stretching area and in my bedroom. Oh, I have to establish some rules. Your side, my side. This works well until my parents have more news and more and more Something has to be done. And then I remember the fox. Would you look after these rabbits, I ask. Gladly, she says. So off they go. Yes. It's just me. Just me and all this space. Just me? I go next door. Would you like to come in too? Says the fox. The more the merrier. Okay then, I guess. Look at all those eyes. Oh, oh. And much to my surprise,
It is fantastic. So I guess he discovered that being an only can be okay, but it's also nice to be part of a bunch. Well, shall we get out our bubble gum? Just pretend bubble gum. And unwrap it and pop it in your gum. Chew it up until it's all soft and squishy. And then we can do something disgusting with it. Ready? Set? Did you spit it right in your hand? I did. And then <coughs> clap your other hand on top and you're now your hands are stuck together with sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your knee. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your nose. On stick, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your arm. On stick, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your cheek. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your back. On stick, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on mom or dad. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your toe. On stick, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum. Time to throw it in the trash. Well, we've got time for one more book before our flannel board story. This is called Time for Bed, Fred. This is written and illustrated by Yasmin Ismail, and it's published by Walker Books for Young Readers. And this is Fred. Bong, 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 bong. It's eight o'clock. It's time for bed, Fred. Fred, where are you going? Fred? Oh, that's not your bed, Fred. Fred, what are you doing up there? Trees are no places for dogs. Uh-oh. Where's your bed, Fred? Fred? Fred, Fred, watch out for the muddy puddle. Oh, too late. Oh, Fred, you are filthy. Bath time. Oh, wait, Fred, wait, you're not dry yet. Oh dear, come on, Fred, it's time for bed. Fred? 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 It's very late now, Fred, time for bed. Okay, you can have a story first, but just one. Now, Where's your bed, Fred? That's not your bed, Fred. And that's not your bed, Fred. That's not your bed, Fred. 
Oh, Fred, that, that's my bed. Let's find your bed, Fred. At last. Night, night, Fred. Sweet dreams. I'm glad he finally got to bed. All right. Well, can you wiggle your fingers? Wiggle your toes? Wiggle your shoulders? And how about your nose? Can you wiggle your elbows? And slap your knees? And then stretch out your arms? And get ready, please, for something on the flannel board. I wonder if some of you took a trip to the zoo this week. It'd be a great day for it. And our story takes place at the zoo. Well, polar bear, polar bear, what do you hear? I hear a lion roaring in my ear. Lion, lion, what do you hear? I hear a hippo snorting in my ear. Hippo, hippo, what do you hear? I hear a flamingo fluting in my ear. Flamingo, flamingo, what do you hear? I hear a zebra braying in my ear. Zebra, zebra, what do you hear? I hear a boa constrictor hissing in my ear. Boa constrictor, boa constrictor, what do you hear? I hear an elephant trumpeting in my ear. Elephant, elephant, what do you hear? I hear a leopard snarling in my ear. Leopard, leopard, what do you hear? I hear a peacock yelping in my ear. Peacock, peacock, what do you hear? I hear a walrus bellowing in my ear. Walrus, walrus, what do you hear? I hear a zookeeper whistling in my ear. Zookeeper, zookeeper, what do you hear? I hear a polar bear, a lion, a hippo, a flamingo, a zebra, a boa constrictor, an elephant, a leopard, a peacock, and a walrus. That's what I hear here at the zoo. Why don't you come and visit me? I think that would be a fun thing to do. All right, well, let's finish up with one of our Sandra Boynton books. And this is a favorite called Good Night, Good Night. And it's published by Little Simon. With all the dancing. Well, the sun has set not long ago. Now everybody goes below to take a bath in one big tub with soap all over. Scrub, scrub, scrub. They hang their towels on the wall and find pajamas, big and small. And with some on top and some beneath, they brush and brush and brush their teeth. And when the moon is on the rise, they all go up to exercise. You see Bernard doing push-ups? And down once more, but not so fast. They're on their way to bed at last. They climb into their feather bed with some at the foot and some at the head. And two little rabbits sing a song while everybody hums along. The hippos, big hippos, will dance in the mud. The piggies will follow them in. And down in the hollow will elephants swallow that mud that comes up to their chin. The cats and the bears, the lions and dogs, the rhinos and moose come along. To rabbits that's we too will gladly agree to sing everyone's dream in a song. 
the day is done, they say good night, and somebody turns off the light. The moon is high, the sea is deep, and they rock and rock and rock to sleep. So I hope those bedtime stories will help you get to sleep tonight. Bernard and I thank you for joining us, and we invite you to come back next time for some more bedtime stories from Wood Library. Bye-bye.